What's up guys, of course, welcome to another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with Jewel Strule, of course, the Scarender. And yes, they're going up against Friskadisk yet again, the guy who beat me with his loop honey. And basically here, um, due to the stream that I had previously to that match, uh, I decided to actually, since people were wanting to play higher tiers, that I had to design a UU team and I had to stick with it. And that was what I decided to do, so I decided to actually bring a team that Star Dasher was, um, had built, another great guy, uh, but I decided to do my own twist on it basically to uh, get my own feel, but basically he uses the Mega Swampert and uh, the Tornadoes to set up the rain, and uh, yeah, I said it was a great idea and I decided to build around that and just basically try to get momentum out of it, and uh, that is of course the team you see. Now my opponent, while well, he did bring o one OU, the rest of his team is actually lower tier. We've got Seeky, Murkrow, Zangus who kept it up, which actually is NU, Chrysalia from UU, and then I guess Lupani from OU. I myself is using Hillisk, which is, of course, uh, I do believe UU. Tornadoes, which is BL2. Um, oh, I was so close to say Gumi. Gudra, uh, which is UU. Escavaldir, which is RU. And then uh, Swampert, which is of course UU, and um, Lucario, I was gonna say, but Ludicolo, which of course is NU. So, yeah, basically, here we're just gonna start with Hillis since I can't speed everything in his team. And from there, we're just gonna do it. Alright, let's go. So, luckily for me, actually, he's gonna start with the Cabotops. And I am fearing that he could be your weakness policy or focus sash. So, I decided to go for a Hyper Voice instead because Hyper Voice is. Easily a 2 hit KO, even with resisted damage. And he actually told me later that he was weak armor. And you know, that's dangerous, seriously. He's gonna set up a small stance here, that's fine. His only priority is just gonna be nom nom by my uh, dry skin. So he's actually decided to switch out. He's gonna go to his Wally, 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 Wally. Did I say it was Wally? It's a Wally. It's a Wally Cresselia. I am easily naming my Cresselia Wally. This thing to a crit specs hyper voice to the face and lived it. Lived it. And I'm basically, I saw the crit and I was thinking that I could maybe take him out, you know, hoping he goes for an attack maybe at best. I should have switched out, yes. But at the same time, hell, I'll get so much damage out of this that I just, I really need this thing to go down. Let's go for Call Mine. And I'm thinking, yo, I'm close. I'm close ish of killing it. And no, he lives with actually 2 HP. And you know, he, he's obviously back on track here, and the Hill is just wasting time. He's screaming with his hyper authentic voice, but nothing is happening. Chrysal is like, nah, -uh, not even having any part of that. I am just a Luna Duck, or whatever. So I'm basically gonna go to Durandal. Durandal is one hell of a Pokemon, and of course, the defensive wall of this team with max attack because Escavaldur has such a massive attack stat and with of course the Pokemon Reuniclus and uh, of course this thing Cresselia uh, Mega Horn and Knock Up is one of those very very powerful moves that could easily take these guys out or at least phase them off so uh, I decided to go for Knock Up actually predicting the switch out but he's actually staying in, and I actually score crits here, but I mean, really now, it's not gonna matter, because the follow-up is, of course, the Mega Horn. Like I said, super surprised it stays in, because this Mega Horn, it's close to like a 1-hit KO, even for full HPs, this thing is like gonna go down, basically. So I was really surprised, like I said, that he actually stayed in, because Escavalier is just that threatening. It really is. So I'm just gonna go to his Sorrow, and... Um, I didn't necessarily fear this guy because even with, like, say close combat, it's still like at best since it, I am a defensive wall, it should do a bit over half at best. Um, so it's gonna go for that close combat which I did expect and uh, yeah, a bit over half, I guess that's more like 60-70% but still, I do live it and you're gonna just smack him with an iron head and uh, that's that. That is that. I really felt bad there because I was not really seeing what it was gonna go for. So anyway, I'm gonna bring he's gonna bring Cabotops. I am predicting the waterfall and gonna go to the Hillisk. So um, he definitely saw it one coming. Or actually, he was fine going for Stone Ages. So this was just 
you know, th that's a bad play. I mean, that that's how it's gonna go down. I know I could take a stone edge if that was the case, but he scores a crit there, which basically means that we're, we're gonna crit each other back and forth. So anyway, I'm gonna bring Tequila, and uh, I'm basically just gonna go for a Rain Dance here, just to make sure I have speed. Um, I actually have three Pokemon with Rain Dance in this team, basically so the Swift Swimmers can just, well, eradicate really whatever comes in their way. Now, I am a defensive um, Lodicolo with um, max special attack and life orb, so that crit should not matter. But it is yet again, I think that's like a fourth crit this battle. Um, and of course, I'll take him out. He's gonna bring the Murkrow. And I was debating whether or not I should stay in for a potential, and I say potential, fun way, but it came down to that Sundric, which of course is the Mega Swamp, but could deal with the T Wave, and that is definitely the right call to make. And of course, we're gonna get our change going, we're gonna buff ourselves up. Which seems weird to say, since I don't really learn bulk up. Which is kinda weird. But anyway, it's gonna go for mean look for some reason. And, um, well, let's face it, even with Violite, Murkrow is just gonna die. It's... It's that simple, sadly. Your Swampert is just that strong, with those massive 150 base. There is nothing taking this. Uh, I am not fully invested in attack though, which you guys will see is actually kind of strange, but I guess I have to go for that now, obviously. Uh, so I'm gonna go to Durandal, basically take the fake out and then fall for a potential hit. Um, fake out is actually not gonna do a whole lot of damage, but since my Scavaldor is damaged, I shouldn't really try to preserve it whatsoever. And yeah, I shouldn't really get my um, yeah, Swampert to get too much damage either. So Rain is gonna stop, it's okay, it really is. Because I still have the Prankster Ring Dance on my Tornadoes, which actually would solve any kind of issues I'm having right now. Because he doesn't have a lot of Pokemon left. I think he got the Cabotops, and of course, this Lufani. So basically, gonna go for Rain Dance, and he's gonna go for a powerful, powerful return. And um, I am lying, he went for an Ice Punch. Actually, the return is a stronger than Ice Punch in this situation, which is kind of funny uh, because of Stab and whatnot. But obviously, I will fall. It doesn't matter, I can't have speed, 135 base, it's just, it's, that's it. Uh, but Cindric, the Swampert, can of course have speed, now that Rain is up. Like I said, I have max speed, uh, I have 168 in defense to be able to take hits uh, from the likes of Aggron and stuff like that, basically to wall them out. And the rest is in the attack, which I thought was, you know, enough. But uh, after going against Lupane, which actually is naturally a bit more bulkier, uh, I am actually not able to, with even in the freaking rain, uh, be able to kill it. You guys gonna see that it lives with a slither of health, but I mean slither, I mean that he is gonna go down to, I think he told me he got to 1 HP after that. Well, I do leave a low kick, uh, I think a return could have taken me out in worst case scenario. I will just go for Ice Punch, finish that up. And that is the game. So, yeah, I mean, that's a 3-0 victory in my favor, and it was a 22-turn battle. And, of course, I think 7 of those was, or 6 of those was, the um, Cresselia against the Hillix. So, I think, with that in mind, it's a very fast-paced battle, and I do win this one quite comfortable. It was really no real danger for my potential win throughout this battle. I had the better setup, I had a better team actually constructed to deal with uh, tougher opponents and uh, of course my opponent really only had the um, Mega Lupane which of course was the, main, the only real threat to the team and even with that I didn't this time had the issue of not being able to outspeed it and that is what stands out that I had the necessary power to deal with that. And of course, this rain team is uh, for Yu Yu. It's really good. Like, it's uh, it definitely is worth keeping in mind. Now, it, there are issues in this team, and they should definitely be mentioned. And that is that it is really not enough bulk in this team, and it can't really stand on its own for too long. And I was debating whether or not making Swampert super aggressively oriented or defensive. And I think it hurt me a bit that I actually went for a defensive set. So I'm gonna make it a bit more. Uh, offensively built, but I'm also gonna make my Ludicolo a bit weaker and probably more especially defensively built because Heracross is a thing 
and I should not rely on Ludicolo to take defensive hits from um, from uh, Heracross. That, that won't do. But I really hope you guys enjoy this team, and I hope you enjoy your spell, of course. And make sure to leave suggestions down below if there are things you want to see in a team like this, you know, that I'm missing out as worth keeping in mind. So with all this in mind, guys, I want to thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Until then, take care. You know, the sky slims and whatnot, right? Bye.